access the, um, the captions. So in today's webinar, we will hear from our inclusive ICT research panel members. Um, and throughout this webinar series, we will have uh, a few of the members presenting their own experience and expertise in ICT and disability uh, innovation. And um, so today we will hear from two of them. And then in the subsequent webinars, we will hear from more of them. Uh, please use the Zoom Q&A feature to post your questions. Also, we will be posting some polls in the chats for some interactive and fun bits, as I can understand sitting and uh, listening to a webinar can become quite tedious for an hour. So we have some uh, in, you know, interesting interactive questions that everyone should be able to uh, participate. If there are any issues with um, um, you know, using Slido and logging into Slido, um, I'm sure uh, maybe if anyone's able to raise hand or even just post in the Q and A um, feature. So hopefully Kate can pick that up and we can try and rectify any issues. So with that, I will uh, hand over to Kathy Holloway. Maybe Kathy would like to say hi. Hi, yes, I'm, I'm Kathy Holloway. I'm a white woman with short brown hair wearing glasses, a yellow t-shirt, you, she, her pronouns. Um, and um, yeah, I'm the academic director of the Global Disability Innovation Hub. Uh, Mariam said that this uh, project is under my guide, but I must admit that it's pretty much Mariam's idea. She wanted to do it all. And if the world of funding was fairer, I think she would be the principal investigator, not me. So I think we should just uh, ha hats off to Mariam. Uh, but I am absolutely delighted that it's happening um, and delighted that Mariam has been leading this so well. And it's lovely to have met some of you already um, and I'm really looking forward to the talks today. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kathy. And so with that, I'm delighted to introduce our first speaker, Banya Ojak, who's joining us from Uganda. Banya is a member of the Uganda National Association oh, no, of the Blind. He holds a BA degree in community psychology from Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda, and a certificate in capacity building at Egmont Hodgkin Otter, Denmark. Since 2013, while working independently in a team or with consultancy firms, Banya has conducted various research and survey studies, developed training and user manuals, seminars and workshop facilitation for civil society organizations in Uganda. Currently, Banya is an assistive technology user fellow with International Disability Alliance on the project title Positioning OPDs, that's Organizations of Persons with Disabilities, as equal partners on assistive technology. Over to Banya. Thank you, Mariam. I hope you can hear me. Let me turn on my video. I'll be very far. If you can see me, can you see me? Yes, we can see you and we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm going, first of all, turn off my screen reader because when somebody sends a message into the chat, then it interrupts me. So I'm going to turn it off. Select a simple to print dialogue. List one, list view, acute, escape, zoom. Upload it, JAWS. Okay, there we are. So, thank you once again, Mariam, for inviting me to this uh, webinar and to give uh, an opening speech. Uh, first of all, um, I am delighted to be invited by GDI Hub as a panelist on this workshop. And it is a great event uh, to interactively deepen our understanding, share our dreams and aspirations regarding disability inclusion in ICT. Today, the, the world is experiencing a huge digital revolution in no time. And ICT products and services have profoundly impacted people's participation in all aspects of society, including education, health, healthcare, employment, economics, and social life. When ICT is in inaccessible to persons with disabilities, it creates a barrier to their participation in these activities. Disability, inclu uh, disability inclusion in ICT is an important uh, aspect for economic development. People with disabilities make up to 15, 16% of the global population today, and their exclusion from the uh, digital economy 
cost billions of dollars each year. Therefore, making inclusion can, can expand the consumer base uh, for businesses and create new jobs. It also, by universally designing ICT products and services, um, companies can tap into a big sizable market. And therefore it is very, very important uh, when, we, when persons with disabilities are involved in ICT. What do we mean by disability inclusion in ICT? And disability inclusion in ICT refers to the design, development, and delivery of ICT products and services and content in a way that is accessible and usable by persons with disabilities, uh, various uh, uh, categories of persons with disabilities, including visual, auditory, motor, cognitive, and communication impairment. It also means ensuring that people with disabilities have a basic skills and opportunities to meaningfully use ICT products and services to their full potential. Why is disability inclusion important in ICT? ICT has tra transformed the way people, the people with disabilities access services, providing new technologies, new opportunities for them to participate fully in society. For example, it has facilitated the development of assistive technologies that make it easier for people with disabilities to access information, um, communicate with others and, and perform daily tasks. It has also created opportunities for people with disabilities to engage in remote work. And this has actually has done quite a lot because of poor transport system, for example, in uh, low and middle income countries, then uh, access to ICT services enables them to work remotely and actually uh, assist them or prevents them from the daily commuting, which is a big toll on the health so information access uh, to education and healthcare services have also been boosted by persons with disabilities accessing ICT. Inclusion in ICT also, uh, also have the, the opportunity to, to participate meaningfully in digital economy. Persons with disabilities are able to participate in the digital economy because of access to assistive technology. Therefore, there have been uh, a number of uh, successful inter initiatives to promote disability inclusion in ICT. For example, universal design principles that promote provide uh, clear frameworks for designing and developing ICT products and services that are access to, accessible to persons with disabilities are being applied to ICT products and services, including websites, um, mobile app, apps, softwares, and hardwares. For, for example, a number of websites now offer features such as um, such as adjustable font sizes. We're talking about high contrast color schemes and text to speech uh, feature functionalities. These features make uh, it more accessible to people with visual impairment, for example, but also to other persons with disabilities, uh, categories of, of disability. Access, assist products, uh, tools, 
and services that aid people with disabilities to use ICT. For example, a screen readers that enable people with visual impairment to access information online or speech recognition uh, software that allows people with mobility impairment to type. We have also magnifiers. We also have hearing aids. There is initiatives all enable persons with disabilities access ICT. Organizations of persons with disabilities uh, uh, play a role in providing um, oh yeah, in providing disability inclusion in ICT. These uh, uh, organizations are working to raise awareness, advocate for change, and they'll develop accessible ICT resources and services. Social media platforms such as uh, X, formerly Twitter, uh, Facebook have used, have been used to raise awareness for disability issues and to advocate for change in regard to where people with disabilities access services in the real time. However, there are a number of challenges faced by people with disabilities, mostly in the global south. In low and middle income countries, the availability of ICT products and services um, are inaccessible to people with disabilities um, due to lack of lack of access to electricity and for example in Uganda I can give an example in Uganda as one of the low income countries access to electricity is at 25 percent of the 44 million people in the country and therefore that makes it quite difficult for people to have access to ICT also access to internet is another hindrance to people are accessing ICT then uh, access to assistive technologies is yet another big uh, barrier for persons with disabilities because most of them are very expensive. On top of that, many people with disabilities in low and middle income countries lack the basic skills and opportunities to use ICT products and services. And this is quite crucial because uh, 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 many of the many of the companies organizations that are training uh, basic skills in IC in the use of ICT do not include persons with disabilities and therefore they don't have access to to them many people including designers and developers are not aware of the importance of disability inclusion in ICT or of the cha challenges faced by people with disabilities and this is very very crucial and it calls for a lot of advocacy in, in, the, in that area. Assistive products that enable persons with disabilities access ICT services can be very, very expensive and may not be affordable by everyone, especially in people in countries, people in low and middle income countries who don't have access to, to them because they are quite expensive. So uh, what, has, what has been done? Um, a reliance on voluntary, uh, on, on voluntary compliance with uh, accessibility standards uh, and guidelines. This has not been effective in ensuring that all people with disabilities have access to, uh, uh, to ICT services and products. Uh, people are not, so, sorry, companies have not, have not been uh, really compliant to providing accessibility standard, uh, accessibility in their services and products. And therefore has made people with disabilities don't have, 
limited or no access to assistive technologies and ICT. Lack of coordination among uh, disability, different stakeholders has led to duplication of efforts and has and lack of progress in promoting disability inclusion in ICT. And this is also very, has been very, very, uh, has looked as a hindrance to disability inclusion because there is no coordination. Focusing on accessibility features by producers and designers of uh, assistive technologies rather than uh, inclusive design have resulted into uh, development of ICT products and services that are difficult to use by persons with disabilities. Many countries have accessibility standards in place, mostly in, rural, in, in low and income countries. They have the standards in place, but they are not always enforced. And this means that many uh, are still inaccessible to persons with disabilities simply because the standards are not enforced by this country. Now, to reduce the digital divide and, for, uh, and promote disability inclusion in ICT, the following, I, the following needs to be done. For example, um, promoting universal design. This means uh, designing ICT products and services that are accessible to, to and usable by persons with disabilities. And um, and, uh, the, uh, the, and that these devices, when whenever they are accessible to persons with disabilities, it will promote uh, the ac uh, promote access to. ICT by persons with disabilities. Governments should develop and implement policies and regulations that pro promote accessibility in ICT. This includes developing and enforcing accessibility standards and providing financial assistance for businesses to make their ICT products and services accessible and accessible persons with disabilities. Also raise awareness for accessibility among the general public and the private sector. Businesses should make their ICT products and services accessible. accessible. This can be done following the standards and provide alternative formats for content and making sure that websites, for example, and applications are compatible with the and future assistive technologies. Organizations of persons with disabilities should work with government and businesses to promote accessibility. This uh, this can be done by providing feedback on accessibility issues, participating uh, in the development of accessibility uh, standards, and raising our importance of accessibility. Most of the businesses and, and designers do not know the importance of accessibility in in the services and products. Um, so finding research on accessibility uh, in ICT like this one promotes, uh, uh, can help to support the development of new and innovative uh, ways to make uh, content uh, products and services accessible to persons with disabilities. And this is quite quite interesting as well. In in order to in order to fully benefit uh, persons with disabilities, fully benefit from services and products 
people with disabilities need to have the necessary skills and uh, uh, necessary skills for the city. I can give an example uh, of Uganda Communications Commission, which is a, a government agency uh, partnered with National Union of the Disabled Persons of Uganda to, bring, to give basic skills uh, for persons with disabilities to be able to use ICT, to be able to, 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 to transact business, to be able to have access to ICT. And this has proved quite successful. And therefore, when companies, organizations invest in giving skills to persons with disabilities on ICT, that would be very, very, uh, it em empowers them to use those, to, to, to have access to to ICT. Also promote the hiring of people with disabilities in, in, in ICT sector as researchers, as designers, as developers, and, and as testers of new ICT products and services. This will help to produce uh, ICT products and services that are, are very much accessible to persons with disabilities because some of them will be will have the technical input of persons with disabilities. Promoting disability inclusion in ICT also for international people with disabilities, uh, multinational and academia to together to develop, implement effective when ICT products and services are accessible and available and affordable to people with disabilities, they significantly improve access to all, all aspects of life by persons with disabilities. And without them, without access to assistive technology, without access to ICT, by persons with disabilities, force them to depend more on family and government support, which is uh, a, which does not support independence. Therefore, all stakeholders, including governments, companies, trade unions, employers, organizations of persons with disabilities, and and academia have an important role to play in creating a digitally inclusive future for all. It is my hope that the ongoing research on these, on access, access to ICT by persons with disabilities by GDI Hub is widely dis disseminated across the globe and not only restricted to the UK. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Vanya, uh, for a, a very insightful um, talk, I guess, is particularly around the challenges in lower and middle income countries. We have a couple of questions, but we will come back to them after uh, our next presenter. So uh, our next speaker is Dr. Sadla Kumar Ramachandran, um, who is the co-founder of UK-based Kirchhoff Limited and I Immersive Incorporation USA. Um, Selva views himself as an information inter interrogator and a staunch believer in the principle of knowledge pay forward. Above all, he's an advocate for using technology advancements to empower humanity and promote inclusion. Selva's commitment to improving access extends beyond the lab as he's actively collaborating with domestic and global organizations to optimize emerging technologies. Through his work, he aims to enhance inclusivity and accessibility within the cultural, heritage, and tourism se sectors for individuals with disabilities, particularly for people with underrepresented underrepresented disabilities. Thank you, Selva, and over to you. Thank you, Mariam. Can I share my slide? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mariam, for your, yeah. Thank you, Mariam, for your excellent uh, introduction. Um, I'm Selva, 
uh, I founded Kirk Council Method uh, Dimers in the UK, and I'm also an independent researcher uh, at the European Network for Accessible Tourism to leverage on emerging technology for providing inclusive and accessible tourism. Uh, I'm I'm wearing a brown t-shirt and grayish blue uh, overcoat. I'm having my headphones on and I'm cleverly hiding my baldness with my hair. I'm a brown man. Uh, I, I contracted polio when I was one year old and I have become paraplegic and I never walked in my life. And I have got an autistic son with the learning disabilities and multiple medical complications. So inclusion, accessibility has become part of part of my life. And after having after having my bachelor's degree in India, then being a COBOL programmer for several years in India, I moved to Sweden for my software engineering studies and PhD in Italy. Mm -hmm. So what at, at the early stage, what I have realized is being a disabled person, having acquiring technical knowledge, technical education, and being a contributor would enable inclusion and accessibility. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um I just want to let you know that your screen's sharing. I think you've shared the screen and Zoom pop-up windows are there as well so we're seeing black images over your slide where the zoom pop-up windows are uh, yeah you so if you close so if you close some of the boxes so we're just seeing these yeah pop-up windows i think that's what it is from zoom yes yeah, so if you close those windows and reshare it might help mm. it happened to me once before can you Sorry see me can you see my screen now yeah. I don't know, Mariam, is it the same for you? Is it just me? Yeah, it's the same. Uh, so we can see the Zoom overlays where you see the um, probably the chat and the gallery. We're seeing black boxes. So if you... Um, disable... Maybe if you share the window of the presentation uh, oh, rather, than oh, the, okay, then, rather than the whole screen, it, it might work. Okay, Sorry, okay. Oh, okay, Professor, no problem. Uh, let me... oh. It doesn't work, it's okay. I just thought you might like to know. Can you see my slide now? No. It's the same. So, um, Selva, maybe you could okay. describe okay. the slides. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's better. Yeah. So, um, I've been developing, uh, given given my own personal experience and family experience, I decided to work on emerging technologies, particularly developing virtual reality based tourism platform that could that could provide an alternative tourism plat platform for people who can't travel, as well as a travel preparatory tools for uh, um, children with the special educational needs. So uh, taking my, my my son, he gets, he, he doesn't want to go to a new place and he gets emotional breakdown. But when when he's familiarized with the VR-based videos, he, he has got that familiarity. And when we go to that place, he doesn't get his uh, emotional episode. Uh, so uh, personal experience, family experience, and my knowledge acquired through work experience and education, I decided to focus on developing inclusive uh, product, leveraging on emerging, emerging technology. So in general, disability inclusion, what it does mean is like, recognizing the value uh, that people with the disabilities or uh, people community with the neurodiversity that bring that, that they bring Gen <clears throat> disability inclusion is not just accommodating or for the sake of uh, uh, having that exercise but it, we need to make them feel belonging and that can be only achieved through empathy and providing a level playing field be it ICT or in, in general any inclusion, the it, it has to be co-created for us, for by for us like people with the disabilities and by us people with the disabilities. And as as our world moves from physical world to digital world to metaverse, the disability inclusion is has become very important in every aspect. And uh, taking taking the concept of disability inclusion in ICT, 
uh, in my personal uh, experience, get be, be, uh, disability inclusion provides brings in diverse perspectives and it drives the innovation. So, for example, when I started my VR based tourism initiatives, I was thinking only about the people with uh, mobility issues, and uh, uh, one only when we we when only when we talk uh, talked about this one with uh, uh, autistic parents. It had it had it had altogether created a different use case business case for children with uh, send, uh, children with special education and needs and disabilities. So it could be a preparatory tool. And when I talk when I talk to different stakeholders, people said that it it is not only for people with disabilities or send community. Anyone who wants to have familiarity with 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 the place or with the destination, they would want to use it. And in, including people with disabilities and neurodiverse, economically it creates a larger user base, and the pro, the commercial value of any proposition would would become manifold. And in my personal opinion, uh, uh, people with disabilities should be both contributors and also uh, beneficiaries. So uh, when I was in India, I I not only I acquired technical knowledge myself. But I convinced my ex boss to create a technical educational center to teach program programming in COBOL, Visual Basic, and J two E technology. So many people have become become uh, leading leading uh, technical professionals, and they whenever it is possible, they are contributing to disability inclusion in whatever the system they develop. Personally, I believe that should be that should be a need of more technologies and innovators from uh, people with disabilities and SEM communities. And disability inclusion in I ICT, as Banyu and um, Banyu beautifully explained, it has got wider benefits. And it's not only for people with disabilities. For example, I so the subtitles, whenever I want to watch uh, my own documentary programs, I, I late night, I, I put the mute and watch watch the program with subtitles. Whenever I I get uh, tired of uh, typing, I send voice messages, and uh, the, bring, bringing more people with disabilities or neurodiversity would make uh, uh, the systems more affordable and accessible, despite the challenges with electricity and better internet connectivity. And in, in my personal uh, uh, experience and the work that I've done in the past, awareness campaigns have always worked to include people with disabilities in ICT. And particularly my association with European Network for Accessible Tourism, who are doing wonderful, uh, wonderful work in the aspect of uh, uh, accessible tourism. And public and public-private partnerships brings in the needed funding to 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 share the burden of bringing uh, financial burden of bringing out the uh, disability inclusive innovations and assistive technologies as always despite despite the commercial angles the the big companies they are doing wonderful stuff and in the re recent past more participation from uh, different st stakeholders has been uh, contributing and the initiatives such as uh, uh, GDI hub and impact projects. It has been uh, fast forwarding the innovation, uh, inclusion, disability inclusion in uh, ICT. And uh, and what personally, what despite despite being a disabled person and despite being a parent of autistic son, I I some often I don't realize what other people with disabilities would need so always you know, being an innovator and being a person contributor and be being a beneficiary i always look from my perspective so that i would make many many assumptions for example when 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 we started we are uh we are creation first we started with the six feet uh, height video capturing or three three dimensional uh, objects but when I put it on my when I when I sit on my wheelchair and put the head mounted VR headset, and since I never walked in my life, never stood up in my life, I it it gave me 
dizziness. So, and so then only the despite being a disabled person, sometimes when I make assumption, one size doesn't fit for everybody. So we need to have unique require unique proposition requirements for our use cases and lack of training for both using and creating. So in my like when 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 we send out VR headsets to uh to people. But we we what we have understood is we didn't give them enough training how to use it. We assumed that okay when when I can use it people can use it. So there should be training for uh, the ICT tools while using and also the create for training should be given to the creators and we should have uh, proactive approaches and I believe initiatives such as the GDA Hub and Impact project uh, leads these proactive approaches and in insufficient testing so for, like when we want to test with the people with the disability community or sen community it's very hard for us to for us to find <clears throat> people or parents to test our uh, proposition so since in in, in as a as a uh, small time i mean like not not so rich innovator, not so rich SME. It's very hard for us to provide them uh, incentives or uh, Amazon watches. So lack of incentives for co-creation uh, should be should be overcome. Uh, and my final point is access disability inclusion in ICT or in any other domain. It's a, it's an it's an evolution. So it is constantly getting updated on its own. And we should we sh we all should come together and work towards that uh, vision. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you both Banya and and Salva for uh, speaking and sharing your experience. Um, it, it's wonderful to see uh, that that contrast in um, as Banya mentioned, uh, particularly the challenges in lower and middle middle income countries. And the challenges to, um, you know, the, the digital divide being, um, I guess, you know, larger than, you know, the comparison that um, uh, Selva, you, you made around advanced technology. So I guess, you know, it, it's interesting to see that those two different spectrum of technology and innovation, but at the same time, the challenges of disability inclusion being quite similar. Uh, in both environments. So um, we, the, we would like to uh, invite the attendees to post any questions in the Q&A feature of Zoom if you want to ask any questions to the uh, to the speakers. We have a couple of questions. Uh, I will start with the first one. Um, I assume this is for Banya, but it's open to, Banya, uh, to everyone. Uh, by the way, I didn't get a chance to introduce the rest of our panel. So you can see uh, uh, some, some of the panelists have got their videos on um, and uh, they are from different organizations. Yeah, we will focus on uh, each of their expertise and, and background in, in the subsequent seminars. But the questions, uh, if any of the panelists would like to answer the questions, feel free to do so. Um, and we can do that by raise hand feature so that we, there is less crosstalk. Um, so the first question uh, is from Alex um, Mwangi. Uh, I assume this is for Banya. It says, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Banya, for the nice presentation. May I know from whether, um, whether by enacting laws and policies in inclusion of disability friendly ICTs is not an indicator that the government knows our needs and hence need for groups if persons with disabilities to have more radical approach at, to stand up for inclusion. Um, if I understand this correctly, um, I think what Alex is, is saying that we probably need a, a more radical approach to, um, to, I guess, educating the government um, that the laws and policies are not enough and uh, we need better inclusion, we need better initiatives. So uh, Banya, given your background in advocacy, uh, what would you say to that? Uh, Banya, you're on mute. Zoom the audio now on mute alert. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry. Thank you, Alex, for your question. I mentioned it in my talk that uh, uh, a lot of countries in low and income countries, uh, middle income countries have uh, policies 
have regulations regarding uh, but the problem is the implementation and therefore uh, organizations of persons with disabilities and other advocates need to find uh, different ways of advocating to government to make sure that the government can uh, uh, delivers on their commitment through the policies and, 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 and regulations they've made. And therefore, it's important that uh, persons with disabilities, as you mentioned, raise, uh, get up and um, uh, participate in advocacy. And because it's very important, government will always say, yes, it's in the policy. But when it comes to policy implementation, I think leaders need to be held accountable to include persons with disabilities in implementing programs, uh, mostly at government level. And, and, and then uh, organizations of persons with disabilities need to ask, where is disability? And uh, in the years I've spent in the advocacy uh, field, the problem has always been money, the budget. And therefore, persons with disabilities need to be attentive at the budgeting level of government. When the government is budgeting, that's where the problem is. The guidelines speculate and the policies speculate inclusion. And when it comes to budgeting, then uh, inclusion, money for inclusion does not appear. And that's where we have a problem, mostly in low and income countries. We have a lot of competing priorities and therefore disability always come last when there are other competing priorities. And therefore, as you mentioned, there is need to uh, find more ad, uh, radical ways of uh, advocating for inclusion uh, and not only uh, policies and, and regulations. I hope I answered your question, Alex. Thank you, Vanya. And thank you, Alex, for your question. Um, I would like to open the floor to all the panelists uh, if anyone would like to um, respond or add to Vanya's point. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Banya, for your answer. I think you've covered everything. Um, uh, while we're waiting for more questions, uh, we have a, 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 an appreciation from one of the participants. I assume uh, their name is, middle name is Brian, uh, who have said that they appreciate the presenters and uh, for having a really interesting and educated session. I do have a question uh, for Selva. Uh, yeah, so uh, Salva, you mentioned um, the role of empathy and how it can help uh, to support disability inclusion, particularly for underrepresented disabilities uh, like, you know, autism and, and for both people, you know, who are on the spectrum and their family members. Um, and I, I do understand there is a lack of understanding of people's needs at the moment. So how can we educate uh, technology innovators and uh, researchers and even educators uh, in the, the different needs of people and how best can we then design approaches to involve uh, people with different needs? Uh, so um, the innovators and researchers, they can, they can include participants from uh, um, disabled community or uh, from neuro but neuro neurodiverse community. It could be teacher or it could be the the person with the son or the parents. In our case, what what happened was like after like after a certain period, we we dis, we approached different sen schools and we requested teachers to come and participate in our workshops and test our um, videos, test our uh, calming environment which we created with the three D modeling uh, to the to the students uh, to the children. So. It's 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 up to the researchers, innovators, and companies to find a way to bring in, uh, bring in same community or people with disabilities. So that would that would that that ecosystem would make better provide an opportunity for better understanding and lead to more empathy, empathized perspective. Great, thank you. Um, again, if any of the panelists would like to answer, please feel free. I think Sarah, did you raise your hand? Yeah, can I add just a quick uh, of course. point? 
Um, as a neurodivergent person myself, uh, I would like to add also the, um, the fact that funding in research um, are very focused at the moment in the biomedical uh, model, medical model in general. Um, so what happens is we don't have a lot of research on the specific needs that um, autistic people, neurodivergent people, or disabled people in general actually have, because that implies a qualitative uh, research that it, it gets less funding, it gets less support. Um, so it's very rare that when we have, for example, an analysis of you know, um, higher education, uh, we get research that explores uh, and goes to speak with students who are disabled and try to understand directly their needs. And I think that's another point that we do need to have more. And in, in this area, it also enters citizen and organizations of persons with disabilities generated data. So um, data that uh, we are creating on the ground by the needs that we are seeing. Uh, and that's uh, incredibly, I, I feel like it's a, a treasure of, of disability data that is not being used as much as, as it should. Um, I just wanted to add this thing. Thank you. Uh, ben, would you like to address the question as well? Well, just picking up on what Sarah said, I, I think it's um, some of this might be about the international standards that are used to measure accessibility conformance, particularly in digital systems. Um, so the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines is a really, obviously a really good framework for uh, creating some baselines for accessible systems that should work well with the majority of assistive technologies. However, I, I think I completely agree I, I, with, with Sarah that I, I don't think they're currently really good at um, ensuring accessibility for all all types of disability and neurodivergent. I think, you know, the web content accessibility guidelines are, are definitely stronger on accessibility for people with visual impairments and perhaps with he hearing loss, you know, the more sensory. So I wonder if that's part of the, the challenge. I, I, I think really enjoyed the, the presentations and I, 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 I noticed the theme around kind of in, embedding this as a, as, an, as a sort of standard approach for suppliers and developers and, and co-creation with people with disabilities to make systems better at source. And I, I was really interested in the line of questioning from, from I think it was from Alex or, um, about, you know, advocacy and taking quite a hard line with, with developers. I mean, I think particularly where something is a, is a product that we're consuming, we're paying good money for, I, I I get very frustrated that accessibility is sometimes seen as a sort of an additional requirement or a bonus requirement in the same way that cybersecurity and data protection would never be seen like that. You'd never dream of kind of seeing them as extras. That's a core part of the delivery of a system. So I think completely agree. I think government frameworks, procurement frameworks should be much better at, at making, you know, accessibility compliance and evidence of that an absolute core part of inclusion in any kind of gov government procurement frameworks, consortia, deals, those sorts of things. And I think until we get that basic framework in place that it matters to suppliers, it's going to affect their ability to sell their products. I think we're not going to progress as quickly as, as we could. So I really like that kind of hard line. And, and, and I think it's really important because people would learn very quickly if we did that. Absolutely. I, I think uh, that's definitely one approach and possibly could be an effective approach because nothing else seems to be working. So, um, Kathy, would you like to add anything to that, uh, given, you know, uh, a lot of work that GDI Hub does in that space with government and... Yeah, and sorry, I have, I have uh, you popped up on the other screen, so I keep looking up there because it's my other screen is quite small. Um, yeah, I, I, well, it, governments are hard because, because I think, as um, as was mentioned a little earlier, the, the biggest thing is you, you get the policy, then you need it implemented. And in order for it to be implemented, you need the budget. And in order for the budget, you need people that can then um, deliver against that budget. Right. So you, so you need personnel and things. And and it, it, updating policies takes time. So if you think about I, I'm also neurodivergent, but you know I was diagnosed as neurodivergent last year. 
I'm 44. Um, so a lot of people are in, in that bucket. And I think that, um, you know, the laws and, 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 and the regulations and the trainings will take time to catch up, right? They're not even, they haven't even got the personnel to diagnose at the moment, let alone personnel to then bring in accommodations. But also, I don't know about you, but I have been finding that um, the assistive technology uh, landscape for, say, uh, neurodiversity is is rapidly changing. So recently, I would argue that um, the two things that I find have, have revolutionized, the things that UCL gave to me, like when they when they knew about different things, aren't amazingly helpful, if I'm honest. There's one thing that helps me read a little bit better, but I rarely use it because I've already discovered lots of workarounds. But the things that I've actually found really useful is a, a software called Flow Club, where you just join and um, you like book meeting times to do things together and also bullet journaling. Those two things have revolutionized my ability for my little ADHD brain to stay focused. But uh, a few years ago, they weren't main, a couple of years ago, they didn't exist or a year ago, they didn't exist. One of them didn't exist. And bullet journaling, only, I only really understood the full philosophy recently when I did the course rather than just sort of reading a couple of blogs. And if, when I'd figured that out and applied it, but the course was I don't know, three hundred dollars, and and it was four hundred dollars for me to get Flow Club, and um, I, I will try and expense them when I. But I'm not very good at doing my expenses, but when I, when I get my hands doing my expenses, I'll try and expense them, and I'm sure UCL will pay for them, um, because they're a good employer, but um, but that you know, for that to then trickle back up the chain of even at UCL level to go into policy of should this be things that are being provided, and then you think about that at a government level, it, it does take time because the thing and the landscape is moving so i do have some some sympathy for the policymakers um and implementers um but equally i think that could be gotten around by maybe trusting us with a budget <laughs> for what might help us right? yeah. because you know if somebody gave me a thousand dollars a year i wouldn't waste it you know <laughs> like, you know so so i think there is something about um yeah the sort of need to uh, approve does that make sense rather than I hate the word empower but rather than just let you get on with figuring out a journey um yourself so I've, I've used up the last of the time there Barry apologies no that that's perfect and I think that that sort of concludes the discussion quite well as well um I did notice that we have quite a few more questions in the chat but uh rest assured we will be addressing them in the upcoming seminar in the webinar sorry in the next couple of weeks so uh do join uh and also we will have some blog posts coming up in the next few weeks as well so uh the panelists will be able to address some of these questions in that as well and we will be sharing that through the mailing email addresses that everyone has provided to attend the seminar um i keep saying seminar we should do this in person more it's a webinar <laughs> um so yes thank you everyone for joining uh this brings us to the end of uh, our session today and uh, we will see everyone uh, next week thank you bye thanks everyone thanks mariam thank you to the speakers bye